It is triple witching day and we need to take a look around the markets to see what's going on with the indices. I want to talk about some big tech and then just a few other plays in this video. I am Dr. Stock, doctor of education. And did you know that Rudolph once stuck his nose in Frosty the Snowman's eyeball? Rudolph tried to apologize. All Frosty saw was red. And even though Rudolph was trying to apologize, all Frosty could do was give him the cold shoulder. Listen, <laughs> I get it. That intro is way too long. Let's get right into it. I'm going to talk about QQQ. SPY, man, I got a lot of them. I got to put it up here so I can see it. I also, I'm going to talk about Google in this one, NVIDIA, Tesla, Enphase, Palantir, and Exxon Mobil. I'm going to do that all in short order because I know that your time is valuable. So I will in this video tell you about my Patreon where you can see my buys and sells, how I'm playing the market, my options course, and then also about Moomoo. But like I said, your time is valuable. So let's put that down and pop this up. And the very first thing that we're going to talk about is QQQ track in the NASDAQ 100. So let's zoom in in the pre market hours here. We're rocking about 404, almost up to 405. That puts us up above yesterday. But like I said, it is triple witching day. We want to watch for this because, and when you look at the RSI for this one, we are already in significantly in the overbought territory, we have been for a while. Momentum has gone flat on us going back from Wednesday to Thursday. So we'll see where it puts us today. There should be some profit taking as well as some rolling of options and as well as covering some short positions and reestablishing some new long positions. So we'll want to be watching for that. Now, let me show you out on the weekly basis here for the RSI. We've gotten our first warning shot. After all this run up, we've gotten our first warning shot after a significant, amazing, incredible run. Just It's hard to think that just Towards the end of October, as a matter of fact, the last full week of trading in October, we were all the way down at 342 and now we're up over 400. So going all the way from that last week in October, and then we had just an incredible November, traded sideways for a little bit, and then finally we get a good week coming up for us in December. So this is great, but it is Friday. Lots of options expiring. We wouldn't be watching for that. Taking long positions now on the queues. I do have a small one out there because I thought I would squeeze a few more dollars out of this and it's possible, but I do want to see where things land us and I want to replan for Monday when it comes around. Let's move over to the SPY. So when we look at the SPY daily chart, same thing that we're significantly overbought on the RSI. We are up above what we have for the all-time high of that 467 and in the pre-market we're rocking about 471 so we'll see it should be an interesting day for us i think i think it's going to be incredible and i think the day traders out there are going to absolutely love it and uh and i hope that i get a chance to cash in on my tqqq calls that i have out there while they're still profitable that should work out pretty well for me let's move over from there to the weekly chart and then we'll get on to google in just a moment so again we get our first warning shot as per the rsi 12 that we have here that is currently saying, hey, you guys are getting close to that overbought territory. You might want to be careful. And we can actually be up there for a little while before things start to turn around and come back down. But those warning shots, it, it is something that's questionable if you're going to take those long-term long positions from where we're at right now, that you could experience that sort of pullback and it could be something a little bit painful along the way. I would much rather establish those long positions as we cross over the 50 than I would where we start crossing up here where we're at with the 70 where we get into that overbought territory. But now I will also put out that, that it is still bullish for both indices as we look at them. And I don't know why I don't have IWM up here. Let's go over to IWM just real quick for the Russell 2000 because we have crossed that 200 mark and in the pre-market we're at 200 dollars and 17 cents for IWM. This does track the Russell uh, the Russell 2000. And I think it is possible it popped at 207 uh, before we really start to settle on this one. So we're going to have to watch and see. We haven't gotten that warning shot on weekly basis like we got for SPY and QQQ. And I think that this is very noteworthy. All right, over to Google for big tech in the pre-market hours, 133.65. So ah, 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 staying alive, staying alive. Maybe I did better with the BGs than I did with MC Hammer yesterday. You're going to have to let me know about that down in the comments. I know uh, not everybody's a fan of my singing. Love doing it. Terrible at it. So we still have those 50 period moving averages, the, the blue and the red that's squiggling through here to, to fight with, to contend with. We have to break up over those to return to a bullish territory. We have to break 140, as a matter of fact, to make this inverse head and shoulders play uh, come to life. We need that for confirmation. We just haven't had it yet. We've had nothing but but a sell off during that time and a settling. But I do think that money is going to start flowing back towards big tech sooner than later because I think the companies are still incredible. And that leads me to what we have for NVIDIA. And so for NVIDIA, this one has not suffered the same fate as Google, but it also hasn't done as well as some of the other ones while they were still rallying. So we haven't seen the sell off like we saw in other big tech. We're holding steady right in the 480s in the pre-market hours, 482 
20. So Nvidia, I still think is a $500 stock that is just trading under it for whatever reason. And I think it's getting time for me to add a few more shares to my portfolio uh, for Nvidia. And this is one that I think it's just going to keep on moving with the markets. I think it's uh, receiving some of the, the temperament or punishment that we're seeing in big tech with some of the money flowing out of that as people cash in on some of that or take some of the profits off the table for that. And we're going to have to watch and see if that's something that persists for NVIDIA. Like I said, I do think, so especially in 2024, that we strongly cross that 500 and we stay there for a while rather than testing 500 and getting rejected every time. I think our time is coming for NVIDIA absolutely and incredibly, I think should be on your watch list. Tesla, Tesla on a daily basis right now, looking real good for the RSI, which I forgot to mention for NVIDIA. NVIDIA, by the way, we're not overbought on this thing like we were on some of the indices. And if we go out to the weekly basis, and I'm sorry to backtrack like that on you, weekly basis still very much in strongly in bullish territory for that. So for Tesla, when we look on a daily basis, we're also not overbought. As a matter of fact, in the pre-markets hour, hours right now, rocking about 253 and a reduction in interest rates is good for autos. And right now, Tesla is being treated like an auto stock. So that is something that is absolutely worth paying attention to, have a long-term position in my portfolio, and I'm going to continue to add to it over time. And should the right moment strike for it, I will also put out some options on Tesla. So going out to end phase, end phase rocking about 126. We got warning shots on this one on a daily basis that right now things are starting to look a little bit salty. We are starting to get near that target of 130. We're at currently 126. So we're like, what, 3% away from uh, from reaching that 130 target. And, uh, you know, it was it was pretty incredible to watch. And that was uh, one of my most profitable options plays in a long time uh, when I caught that pop. Uh, yesterday, but I did not I definitely didn't hold on till its richest part. If I did, I would have over three X what I got instead. I fell just under 194% instead of hitting that golden 200% that's out there. Not going to uh, to talk badly about that because that was incredible. Let's look at end phase on a weekly basis because I think this really is worth your time to look at this on a weekly basis. We have just tagged with this is with the RSI 12, not the 14, which is pretty common. I like the 12 for a little bit more early of an indicator. But remember that also being early can mean that you also get false signals. So you got to just be careful with that. On a weekly basis, we are just crossing the 50, which is a bullish thing for end phase. So I want to keep putting that out there. That end phase, I think, is starting part of a larger movement. It might come back down and retest support. Maybe it could retest 120. Maybe it retests 112. I don't think that for right now that we get back down to 100 without a push from the overall markets really helping it out or maybe some big company specific news like negative stuff comes out. But short of all that, from a technical standpoint, I think that end phase, even if we do retest support, I think it's going to be a higher support. And I think we're going to continue to move upward for a little while for end phase. Palantir, pre-market hours, 1847. That would open us up solidly, keeps us up above the 50 period EMA and SMA and possibly gives us that cross with the yellow and green, which is the five and 13 EMAs, which falls into the bread recipe. We still want that RSI to cross 50 for that confirmation. So today could be that confirmation of that bullish move upward for PLTR. And that is specifically what I'm looking for. I know somebody down in the comments says, so are you looking for bullish or bearish? Right now I'm looking for bullish action as we are above the 50 period simple and exponential moving averages, I think that we could swing up from here off the bottom of this channel. That is most likely what I think is going to happen. It still is possible that I'm wrong and we come back down through the supports that are here, this trend line and also the 17 line that the $17 mark that we have for end phase. So I do want to just toss that out there that should we break back down through the 50 days and the technicals fail on this one, then, then we had those are our support levels that we have coming up that are nearest to us. So last thing, ExxonMobil, look at this descending wedge that we've been on for a while for ExxonMobil. I've had these drawings on here for a, a week or two, I would say, and we've been following right along them. And let me zoom in to show you uh, the most interesting part of this. We came down and we tagged this line down here at about 97, well, almost $98 per share. As we look at ExxonMobil, and we on a daily basis are just about to cross the 50. We look at this point of confluence. Not only are we about to cross 50 on the RSI, also we're at the top of this descending wedge, which is a bullish reversal pattern, not confirmed yet, but it is a bullish reversal pattern. Uh, but then we also have this line of resistance right at about, there we go, right at about 102. So being able to pop up above that and out of what we see for the descending wedge could be bullish. We still have the 50s to contend with that are right around 104 to 105. So not only do we have to break this trend line here and through the resistances that we have, but once we cross the 50s and then we also have the 200. So really 
we have room to get up to like 105, which isn't a huge move from now, right now. Right now we're at 102. So you get like two to 3%, not bad. Up to 106 is the 200 day, but up above that could, I mean, I should say, is where that bullishness starts to come back into it. So watch the RSI, watch for that bigger movement. It could be enough that blows us through these moving averages, especially if we're moving into a lower interest rate environment. And especially if the Fears of recession are something that start to pull back for a little bit and they recede for a little bit because that should do well for energy prices and ExxonMobil should be able to join that party. So I did tell you guys that I would tell you about where you can see my buys and sells and you can do so through the Patreon. That link is down in the description. Come over and join me and my community members that are over there in the Discord. The Discord is specifically where I post my buy and sell alerts. Also the Patreon, I have my Tesla and Nvidia earnings and stock price predictions. And then also my, my options course is available at the Patreon as well. And then you can also get free stocks from Moomoo. This is mostly where I trade my options and you can find that link down in the description. Sign up, make your deposit, and you can get up to 15 free stocks by doing so. All right, I wanna wrap this up for you guys because I do have to go here. And like I said, I know your time is valuable. So the indices, the overall indices, they're starting to look a little bit overbought, especially the Qs, SPY, and also we're starting to get warning shots on the week on a weekly basis that we're starting to get overbought as well. That could be an indicator of a possible pullback sometime in the near future. I still think that we have even higher highs coming for us over the next several weeks, I think this cards are still on the table for that to happen. So I do want to put that out there that I still am bullish on the markets, even if we get a near term pullback. IWM, which tracks the Russell 2000, still has a little bit more room to run up to the top before pulling back, although it might pull back with the other indices. We're going to have to watch and see that it has recently been an outperformer of SPY and QQQ over the past month. And this week has certainly been a, like a stellar performer compared to what we saw with SPY and QQQ. And then also about the other stocks that are in there. End phase, I'm going to keep watching. Tesla, uh, what else did I have out there? Palantir, ExxonMobil, all the ones that I mentioned. To go back, watch this video again. Google as well, I'm keeping an eye on because I do think that we could also have a good move there as well. Thanks guys for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Remember, the Patreon, come on over and join me in the community. Your free stocks from Moomoo. And as always, I am Dr. Stock, doctor of education. Remember my friends that learning is earning and we'll see you in the next video.